guys and gals welcome back to doing redneck things it is monday may 8th 2023 which means you'll be seeing this on on the 9th oh, what happened to my light oh, anyway i forgot to shut my phone off too so bear with me a second while i do a whoops dang it okay so anyway it is may 8th uh Kind of a sad day for me. Today would be my little brother's 57th birthday. He passed away in 2000, uh, 2011. So we're, today I was spent thinking about him. Every time I hear an Oak Ridge boy song, I hear him. He had that deep ba boom, ba boom voice. So, yeah. Happy birthday in heaven, my little brother. All right. It is, I have questions times, and I got some some pretty good ones this week. Uh, uh, number one is going to be from uh, Tony Walsh of Walsh Homestead Adventures. Go check him out. He's a awesome guy. Uh, what he'd like to do, uh, he'd like to know if y'all remember that uh, commercial for the the Tootsie Pop. He wants to know if the guys and gals ever tried to count the licks on the Tootsie Pop. Y'all remember that commercial? Uh, how many licks does it take? So, uh, <laughs> I know I remember when I was a kid, I never made it. I always got a book. As soon as you're as soon as you broke through to that Tootsie Pop thing, it was crunch, 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 and it was gone. <laughs> so that is from Tony Walsh. Uh, good to hear from you, Tony. I, uh, I, get, I get so far behind on the channel sometimes, I don't know. It's, it's so hard to keep up. But go check out Walsh Homestead Adventures. Uh, you'll, you'll like it. He does prayer Sundays and... Or, yeah, it was a pickup truck Sundays. Yeah, yeah. check him out. He's re he's a really good guy. You'll enjoy it. Okay. The next one is number two, which is from G Bear, and he wants to know if AI, artificial intelligence, if the opposite of that is AOC. Y'all know who AOC is, the little lady on on the hill that does all the screaming. <laughs> so yeah so that would be opposite of artificial intelligence would be AOC <laughs> number three this was a good one I saw this on the news the other day for number three so there's a couple on vacation in Hawaii were following the GPS in their rental car to the exact point and wound up floating in a harbor and had to be <laughs> had to be rescued so how do you not see that you're going to drive into a harbor you know it's like you just drive the car off the boat ramp because the GPS told you to holy crap that's just funny it's like, oh, honey, uh, you turn here. Did you wake up? I, uh, honey, 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 honey. No, GPS says go. Get in there. Just keep driving. Next thing you know, your minivan's floating in the harbor. <laughs> that is funny. Next one is... <laughs> Can you believe that? you just uh, following the GPS and drive right in the dang harbor. So anyway, that is number three from... I just saw that on the news. Okay. Another, the next one is from G Bear. Uh, the next couple are from G Bear. He's uh, we've been, he's been on a roll all week. 
Number four is where did the phrase copycat come from? Because <laughs> cats don't copy anything. You know, monkey see, monkey do would be make more sense, yeah, I think. You know, and Chibiard thinks, yeah, hey, monkey see, monkey do. Copycat, copycat. How do, how do, you know, where does that, how does that come in when copycat? Uh, that's a, that's a weird one, but makes you want to know. I want to know where did the phrase copycat come from? Number five is also from Jeebir. He wants to know. So you're out, you're out and about, and uh, you're walking around. And why is it a piece of paper? your hat or money gets away from you on a windy day and you go to chasing it it'll stop about 12 feet away and stay there and then you reach out to grab it and you get about an inch from it and the wind blows it again so does that repeat till you end up catching it no I know I've, I've had that happen to me and I've run and stomped on it and then tried to pick it up so why does the paper wait till just before you grab it to fly away I want to know I think mother nature is just cruel <laughs> so you know you reach out to grab it it blows away another 12 feet you run over there just about get to it and it blows away again and repeat and repeat until you wind up stomping on it or it blows out into the lake or across the highway or some dang thing. So that is number five from G Bear. And uh, this uh, this is one that I got off of uh, the Ian Ian Gates sent me one and uh, After he sent it, I brought up another one. So this one, this is one I come up with, number six. Why does it take a college education to fly a military jet, but only a high school education to fix it? It's puzzling, isn't it? College education to fly them, high school education to fix them doesn't make sense I think it should go either way college education to fix it rednecks can drive anything you know put me in a jet in an airplane cockpit I'll figure it out oh I wonder what this does ooh that makes things go <laughs> so yeah, yeah put me in one of them suckers I'll figure it out in a little bit in no time of course, I've been a heavy equipment operator all my life, and some of them new jets are like playing video games. So that that's number six. Number seven. I was watching uh, the PGA Tour the other day, and I got thinking, why don't golfers wear numbers on their shirts like other sports do? I don't know. All the other sports have numbers on their shirts. So why don't golfers? Interesting, interesting. I know they have uh, all their uh, sponsors on their shirts and that's kind of cool. So why don't golfers have numbers? And now stepping up to the tee, number 32, Tony Larson. Give him a whack. <laughs> all right, that is number seven. Number eight is from Ian, and he wants to know, why is it in order to enter a college or a university, you have to take SATs? And for practice in law, you have to take a bar exam for becoming a doctor, medical board exam, and other trades have competency tests, you know, for professionals such as teachers, barbers, Plumbers, electricians, carpenters, equipment operators, you, you name it. You all got to take a competency, competency test before doing it. But there is no requirement for politicians. 
You don't even have to be, you don't even have to have graduated high school. As long as you're 18 years or older and no felonies. Of course, you do the felonies after you get in office because you can get away with them then. Uh, that's my opinion. <laughs> you know, so why don't we have a competency test for politicians? Makes sense. I mean, you should at least have uh, studied uh, government and social studies and most of all history. So history doesn't repeat itself. That is my opinion. You know, they, they, I think it's a real good idea to have a competency test before you can run for office. You have to take a test saying that you understand government, how the government works. You know, you you understand history. You understand finances. Uh, there was one other one I said, but I can't remember what it is now. So anyway, I agree. I want to know why don't we have a competency test for politicians so we don't just get any goober in there. Okay, I want to run because I don't know. <laughs> run, I want to run so that the government and make all the politicians get paid minimum wage. <laughs> yeah, three-legged chicken party. Yeah, that's it. We'll get on that three-legged chicken party going again. <coughs> oh, all right, number nine. Saw this on the news the other day. So a guy got into a fender bender with his electric car. Sent it, had to go to the shop and get fixed. So he got it repaired, and they handed him a repair bill. I ain't kidding. $42,000 to fix the damages on his electric car. You could have bought a new car. A new car with an engine in it. And uh, yeah, it, it just forty-two thousand dollars to repair an electric car that was in the fender bender. That's crazy. Then I saw on the news the other day that there was an electric car on on fire on the highway, and you could hear the chief saying, "Just let it burn. We don't know if we can get electro electrocuted or not if we spray water on it." So now, now your car, electric car gets on fire. They're gonna let it burn. Let it burn to the ground. You know I mean, I mean, it's it, it's scary. What you know, forcing this electric car stuff on us. It's gonna be a mess. I mean, it's gonna be a big draw on the grid. On the electric grid, they're gonna have to use fossil fuels to make more electricity to plug all this stuff in. And. That brings us to number 10, a bonus one, the bonus this week. Now they're trying to, uh, so natural gas and propane stoves are going to be outlawed. So they're, they're going to try, they're trying to out, outlaw natural gas stoves and propane stoves. As in Vegas today, and I saw a city bus that's run on propane. So are they going to do away with propane and natural gas? So now all them cities that run natural gas powered buses are going to lose their ass because they got to go to electric? Holy cow, these people are not thinking about... Uh, <laughs> it's crazy. $42,000. $42,000 to get your electric car fixed. We know a lady, uh, a, friend, a friend of a friend's had an electric car that broke down and they don't know how to fix it. It's There's something wrong with the, the electronics in it and the, it would cost more to fix it than it would to buy a new car that's got a gas engine in it or a diesel engine in it. I don't know. It's just uh, everybody's getting all backwards. It's a uh, it, it's it's ridiculous. So anyway, you guys are going to see this on May 9th. 
uh, Tuesday, May 9th. So I'd like to thank everybody for for watching and for keeping this series alive. It's been real fun. Uh, if you have and I have questions, feel free to leave it in the comments and I'll get it in in the next one. As soon as, you know, as soon as I get them, I, I try to get them written down. I have a I have a spiral notebook that's those are all the episodes. Those are all the episodes. Uh, you know, we're on episode 47 now, so that's pretty cool. So I'd like to thank everybody. Support your support your troops. Get out there and vote. They're already doing commercials in Nevada for who's running for president, and smear campaign has begun. It just I don't know, the, the boundaries in this country are getting really crazy. So anyway, thanks everybody. Thanks for watching. We will see you next week on I Have Questions. Next week will be episode 48. Enjoy. Thanks everybody. God bless. Support your troops. Get out there and vote. Love you guys. See you soon.